Hello, miracle workers, everyone. Hello. Oh my God, we had a moment getting on Facebook. I hope I am on fa Facebook right now, but we shall see. And we are blessed as a child of God, and herein lies our claim to all good and only good. We are blessed as a child of God, and all good things are ours because God intended them for us. We cannot suffer any loss or deprivation or pain because of who we are. Our Father supports us, protects us, and directs us in all things. His care for us is infinite and is with us forever. We are eternally blessed as his children. Tonight we're going over the miracle principles within the text. We've already gov uh, covered the first 18 principles, and you can watch it on our website in the description here as well. We spent last week talking about the instruction on sex. And tonight I will give you my version of it briefly in our uh, comments below. I'm sending a link to the Circle of Atonement's commentary from Robert Perry on sex. And tonight we are covering more than just sex, but miracles, miracles, miracles. And you don't want to miss this at all. This is a safe place. You will not be judged, attacked, guilted, or shamed in any way. Only loved. It would be nice, however, if you share and like this post now, as we are live now. And please help us to extend the, to the world the love and the light of God. And here is Reverend Susan Stone giving us the whole brain posture that we enjoy each and every day. Thank you, Reverend Kevin. Hi, everybody. Good evening. So today we're going to get in the whole brain posture, which is getting us from beta to alpha. So you're going to cross your right ankle over your left, and then you're going to put your hands out in front of you and cross your left ankle on, or left wrist on top. <coughs> Roll your fingers so that your thumbs are facing down and your palms are together. So yeah, there you go, you got it. And then you can just relax into your wrist. Yep, sweetie. Cross so your hand, you, one, oh, you, and your palms are facing down. Wow. And then you roll, there you go. And you can either relax into your lap or you can roll up into that yoga oh, pose. Got it? Everybody in their position, good. Close your eyes for me. And go ahead and put your tongue at the roof of your mouth. Perfect. As you breathe into your nose, you will start to activate the relaxation system in your body called the parasympathetic system. And you're going to start to feel yourself just kind of settle into your body, letting all the cares and the concerns of the day just kind of fade away. And what we're doing is we're crossing energy meridians in our body by crossing our wrists and crossing our ankles. And we're allowing the right and left brain to speak to each other so that we get into what we call a whole brain position. And in whole brain, you go from beta to alpha so that you can access your higher awareness, you can access your creativity, you obviously relax, which is awesome for your immune system, and you can also do something called neurogenesis because we're getting into our subconscious, we can actually rewire for positive beliefs. So today's statement is whenever I feel fear, I automatically remember that I am love. So what you're going to do is you're going to say that silently to yourself over and over again. Whenever I feel fear, I automatically remember that I am love. And as you say this over and over again, you may feel a shift. It might feel like a physical kind of letting go, or it might be an emotional just release, 
or maybe even a mental shift like I've got this and when you feel that shift you can open your eyes so again the statement is whenever I feel fear I automatically remember that I am love And you might feel like a relaxation or a release. Somebody just did a big sigh. That usually means you've shifted. And you can take a little bit more time, but since we're just going to kind of keep going on with class, we want to uncross our ankles and uncross our wrists, putting our fingers together like this with our eyes open this time. Just lock in. That statement, whenever I feel fear, I automatically remember that I am love. And what you're doing is you're just removing any resistance to this belief. So this is your save button and you're locking that in. I also wanted to remind everybody that we, we had ran out of our books and we just got a new shipment of books. So if anyone wants to purchase a book from us, they're $47, same as they would be online. And um, we also have some videos that the uh, Circle of Atonement is sending with our purchases. So they're free with this purchase this month. So that's a really nice um, added benefit. And there was something else I was supposed to remind. Donate. Donate, thank you. Um, we also yeah, we need the money. So. <laughs> <laughs> we also um, have a, a donate. If it, this course is free, but if anyone would like to um, donate to us, please go to the Academy of Spiritual Awakening org, and we have a donate button there. And I think that's it. I talked about the box. I got it all. So now you're gonna. Have a wonderful class with the amazing Reverend Kevin Rice. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. I'm back here, folks. Look, we had a hiccup again with Facebook Live. I have a friend that just signed on, so she's watching. Oh, that's nice. Hey, what, what, what's her name? Renee Duran. Hi, Renee. Hey. We're here in West Palm Beach here. <laughs> and you can you remove that uh, brown thing behind it so I can see... Uh, Allison here. Remove just this. that. Yeah, just remove the whole thing. Yep, okay. that works just right. fine. Thank you so much, you all. Okay, folks. Uh, and by the way, uh, all did we say hello to Terry from Washington, D.C.? Yeah. Hi. Hello. Come on. Hi, Terry. I'm so um, glad to have you here. Yeah, it is very nice. So, um, And we'll check in with you afterwards as well. We yes. want to know what's going on with you folks. We are going through the Miracle Principles together. And I really want to um, go, I, before we go, I guess we're on Miracle 20 now, mm -hmm. or 19, 19. 19, Miracle 19, and we'll go through these together. But last week we talked about sex because that was all about Miracle uh, 18, I guess. Right. Okay. So, uh, look, I, I said to you, Amber, that I would uh, give a brief, uh, my version of sex here, okay? Is everyone good with the sex here at all? Anybody have problems with sex? No? no? Not us. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I said last night, you know, as I am moving through sex and the body, you know, don't be disturbed, don't be astonished either, okay? And you can chew up the meat and spit out the bones. You can accept what you accept, and discard what you don't like. It's that easy. Okay. So if you have any questions, as I go through this here, I, I, I created this last Thursday, or last Wednesday at 1 a.m., here it is. I think that everybody, first of all, should understand, and by the way, as I said in the opening introduction, all of the commentary from the Circle of Atonement is in the comments below right now. Uh, Susan or Aaron will put that on the thing right now. 
So don't go to that right now, just stay here. But you can watch it afterwards and get a more detailed description about our relationship with the body and sex. But I, I really want everyone to understand with me the difference between the body being a means as opposed to the body being an end. So you don't want to use the body as something that you're going to get, okay? That is not your goal. When you fall in love, I know you're looking at this way. I, I said this. I met a person this. I met a person this week, you know, and we had a wonderful experience. And I said to this person, "Look, I I I am in love, not with your face or your body, but your mind. So when I connect through my means to connect with that person's mind, of course." Uh, the, the rest things, the other things occur naturally. So the body is not an end. It's not what you want. Okay? What you really want to connect with is that person's uh, uh, mind. Now, I, as you know, as you watch this, uh, you can watch it from last week on the website as well, what we talked about. And I was alarmed initially, when I first, in the new A Course in Miracles, because it's the handwritten notes of Helen Truckman, and I immediately called the Circle of Atonement and I talked to a person there, I think his name is Ken perhaps, and Ken said, just remember this, you know, Bill Thetford was himself gay, and I said, because it was difficult for me. Look, I'm married to a guy for 15 years, or with him for 15 years, married for one year. It feels like 15 years, <laughs> but anyway. Same difference. Uh, Aaron, you he didn't hear that. <laughs> no. Yeah, Aaron, you didn't get this one. We love you, Aaron. Um, okay. The other thing, too, is about, you know, our, when, when the Course talked about homosexuality, it really talks about that, the, that homosexuality for many people experiences as exclusive instead of inclusive. And so to whatever extent that a person is exclusive to the world, period, it's going to go south. So when you instead... That, huh? I'm just trying to clarify because what I understand you're saying is so if a person who is same-sex oriented and they just don't include other people in their lives. Right. At so, all. like, okay, I'm just saying. Like, look, like, for instance, all these only. people here right now, I can say, could you uh, move to the right? Can you, Amber, go to the left here? I'm looking for my right person here. So when I do that and move the everybody, put the, put them in the background as opposed to right here and right now, then I miss the gift from Allison. I miss the gift from from Terry or you or all of you. You understand right. that? Everybody has the same. Everybody is the same. Right. So it's one is an exclusive way of communicating with another person, and that is very egoic. Mm -hmm. And the other way is very inclusive. Mm -hmm. Now, having said this, this has been my practical experience as well. That the moment I become more inclusive and less exclusive, then my experiences with women, you know, even an, emo uh, an intimate uh, exchange with that person becomes more beautiful. Um, okay, and I mentioned this last week as well. You know, we have a tendency to be fixated on beautiful looks, beautiful bodies, and when we do this, and I tell people this in this way, do not go into body comparisons with other people because that is clearly an egoic device to keep you uh, in the suffering. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Terry and then Rhonda. I just wanted to ask a question, and I understand, I think, the reason why you said it, but it's not about connecting with the body, it's about connecting with the mind. I ask you, can you actually connect with the mind or is it two souls that are connecting when you are together with that person physically okay literally there's yes. only one mind here yes so there's not seven billion separate minds 
because there is no separation. So essentially you're reconnecting. You are reconnecting uh -huh. and remembering yes. what you and have discarded. Yes. So you're not an ego trapped with inside of a body. Yes. Okay. You are really wanting to connect with the thoughts of God, which is your thoughts. You want to connect with your God's will instead of your own will. So, so yeah, you're connecting with the mind. But keep in mind this as well regarding soulmates. And I, I mentioned this in my book as well, which is available on the website and here as well. Uh, is you don't really have an experience with a, a soul person, a soulmate who is a person. The soulmate is not a person. It's an experience. And there's a difference. So I'm not connecting with a, a person's body at all. That is not the soulmate model. The truly model of the, the, of the true soulmate is understanding that what you are experiencing in love and light is that person's mind, uh, their soul. So it doesn't really matter where their body is or your body is, it does matter to you where your mind is. Okay? Well, I agree, and I think that's the, the why they connect. And that's why it's a, soul, a soulmate, is because you're actually connecting spiritually, and it's not all the physical um, things. They're connecting on a different level, and that's why I would think that it would be a soulmate. Right. So, okay. I also think, with that in mind, yeah. that what you said about experience, if we could stick with that word experience for a moment, yeah. because the experience of what you're sharing with that individual, especially if you're with someone for a very, very long time. Right. The anticipation being that every time you have this experience, it's you again. This is true. Because it's not the body right. that right. you're having the experience with. It's something that's going through you and through them. Yes. Regardless of gender, right. that is a commitment that of energy. Because what you are reacting to is yourself, is yourself, is a reflection of you. So I said this to Aaron this week. I said, look, man, because we have a very uh, a strange relationship. We are not bound by the social conventions mm -hmm. in this world. Um, so I said to him, look, this is what we are experiencing. We are bathing in light mm -hmm. together. So when I'm speaking about sex or having dinner, mm -hmm. whether with him mm -hmm. or anybody, mm -hmm. that what I'm doing is bathing in light with that person. Because this was the next thing that I was gonna say anyway, we're not a body. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're doing the lessons with us, you're gonna be asked numerous times along with the lesson that you're doing that day, Oh, by the way, I'm not a body. I am free. I am still as God created me, and so forth. I am not what I created, but what I was created by my source, and so forth. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, Rhonda, you had something? Um, yeah, I was just going to mention that I think a lot of people um, who maybe are shaking their head hearing this, but what, what struck me when can only speak for myself, but I think most of us, when we were a lot younger, mm -hmm. we would look at whether it was the opposite sex that we were attracted to, or the same sex, whatever, right. it's all the same. Um, we did look at the bodies, you know, unless you were really, um, really a, so a little soul that was so far ahead of all the other, you know, 20 year olds yeah. or something, or 30 year olds, yeah, in the 20s especially, and younger. And it's a matter of retraining and rethinking and reperceiving what this course is all about. It's yep. just a change of perception. But I think we all grew up looking at the body and the face and this and that. We're and it is perpetuated by the world. Yeah. And you know? But I think that's where we also get caught up in, um, in if there is a negativity, and I'm just putting quotations around that, in the physical experience with someone the ego starts to take over and you want to control them. You want to yes. control them because you don't want them 
to have that experience with anyone else. Yes, and this is on my list as well. What can I get from you? Because that person becomes someone that you want to possess. So <clears throat> that relationship then, this is why I've said this many times, most relationships are two sets of, two sets of expectation yes. uh, with the label of love upon it. And it, it's anything but loving. Yes. And it's based on ego and fear. So of course it will implode yes. eventually. This is why most marriages fail. 60% of marriages fail quickly. Okay. This is not about marriage. It's about love. So marriage is ancillary and secondary. This is why I say in, in counseling relationships as well, is that when a person, when a couple places so much emphasis and attention upon the form, a wonderful wedding, it's beautiful and, and beautiful and, and huge and bigly, as our president says, uh, it's going to be wonderful. It's drama. Too much drama. And when that occurs, then, the content of what is really happening within that relationship uh, takes over the relationship, which is largely fear-based. That is where the quote-unquote substance of fear is. You want to hide that by really making the form more prominent. Allison. <clears throat> surrounding sex because my fear is that if we have sex too soon um, I'm going to experience that kind of just two bodies coming together and I'm not going to have that sort of transcendent soul experience that I want to so I'm stuck I'm stuck like I'm, I'm avoiding having it because I think that somehow by waiting what do you think you want I don't know. Okay. Because I, I fear that like doing it too soon, we haven't connected. I don't know. Okay. Then when yeah, you yeah, yeah. don't do it. Okay. Keep in mind that when we talk about, and this is germane to what you're asking about, and so if you don't get it, all of you, please let me know. You know, when we say matter, we're in matter right now, right? Mm -hmm. The body is matter. Mm -hmm. And the root cause of matter is... It, the meaning is measure. So most relationships are measuring matter. They are measuring bodies. They are measuring relationships. They measure the consistency of sex within that relationship and how it should look, how it, how it should manifest and so forth. So when we do that, we're asleep. We're in time and space completely. So we want to not measure the relationship. That is a trap. So what we want to instead to be here now. So what do we experience? I, I experience it many times where I'm sitting with a person, okay? And we're having a wonderful time. I have no expectations, no agenda whatsoever. And so this person is next to me and doing things that are kind of strange. I'm like, what's, what's going on here? And what they really want is sex, okay? And in that moment, I'm like, I always ask myself, well, what would love do now in this moment? And sometimes I say, sure, and sometimes not, okay? More often than not, it's not. But, uh, but the point is this, is number one, I am, I am going into that relationship in the fully in the present moment so I don't have no pre prescriptions no agendas no expectation I'm fully I don't know what this is right. and if it lightly look you'll know if sex is natural in the relationship is if the sexual experience with that person is light has a light touch to it if it is burdened with a heavy baggage around it then it makes the experience will fo will foster yes. guilt. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So you're not guilty. Agenda. Yeah. 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 Expectation. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Let me say it another way, and I'm almost through. I hope that we get through the miracles <laughs> together. <laughs> My God! At the end of the class. Oh, you know, it's always... Because I, I was weird. You know anywhere. what, though, folks? This was a really long chapter. It is a long chapter. That's it's why it's we're talking we, about it. We feel we tend to exactly. go to as an ex, a spiritual experience instead of realizing that it's the heaps. Experience exactly. of spirituality we have. Exactly. So, oh, it's followed through by it takes it on up. To okay, uh, uh, Al, Al, Allison, let me, and Terry, let me just say this as well for, mm-hmm. for both of you two. Here's another way of looking at it, and I'm going to use money as a, an example that we can compare it to love. We can restrict the distribution of God's good in our mind. So, for instance, right now we have been given the Chalice of Atonement, what A Course in Miracles calls the Chalice of Atonement, or the gift from God. This beautiful, wonderful, wonderful gift that has been given to all of us, most of us reject it. Okay, so this is the way we do this. So, if I know that I am abundance, for instance, because that has been given to me, then the ego steps in and says, well, Kevin, when you get paid next Friday, for instance, then you'll experience abundance. The moment I do that, I restrict the distribution of God's good to them. You see this? So we do the same thing in our relationships as well. I'm looking for a perfect man with a perfect package I mean, generally, so I. not specifically. <laughs> or specifically, what I mean. Or specifically, I'm looking for that guy. The whole okay? package. And so when I restrict the distribution of God's love, I remove it completely from my mind because I have limited it to one avenue. When I open it and say, okay, okay, we're going to be open here. Somebody said this to me in Coconut Grove one time, Uh, a a friend who's a straight guy, and we're in Coconut Grove, and he says, you know what, why don't you connect with these two women right now? And I said, for for what reason? (laughs) Why? No, of course I love communicating with women, obviously, I'm doing that right now. Um, But I said, this... You know, what what do we do? And I said to myself right there, I can't distribute, I cannot restrict the distribution of God's love to just guys, you know? And I invited both of them to come to the house with me, and (laughs) that was interesting (laughs) to all of us. But it was a loving experience I had with them. All I had to do was release the change that I myself have placed in my own mind. You get this, folks? Any questions yeah. so far? Okay, let me just be a little more here. It's a difference between what can I get from you as opposed to what can I give in this moment. And what I want to give is the love of God. And it's a difference between form and content. This is a course in content and not in form of any, any, in, any manner. So instance, <coughs> it's about your brother and sister's minds not their bodies. It's about content and substance and not about specifics. Does that make sense? Yes. You look like you have a question, Allison. Well, I mean, okay, so you could be giving physically to someone, right? But you're saying that's focusing on that. That might be focusing on the body. But if I were to be giving in substance, what would that look like? Love. Love without... Nothing do. That's what you get. So when I say you're giving through your substance and the content, you are extending to that person what they're really wanting, which is the love of God. So you're giving them love, you're giving them joy, and so forth. Now, does it manifest itself in time and space physically? Yes. Yeah. You know, if it works together, both people come together. I said this, I know it's very difficult to say these things, but I'm saying it. I'll say it. No, it's just the play on words. Um, I I want to be very careful about this. Um, 
you know, I mentioned that it is the difference between form and content. Form is temporal. Content is, is, is a constant. So, yeah, in the world of time and space, that's going to disappoint you when you think it's permanent. Okay? Yeah. That is the tendency is to believe that what is temporal is permanent and what is permanent is temporal. For instance, oh, I can love him one time and then remove my love from him. That's not love at all. That's fear. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Do you have a question, Susan? No, I wanted to make a mention, and maybe this would help a little bit, but um, when your interaction is agenda-free, meaning that you're there unconditionally supportive without wanting anything in return because you're listening to your partner, you're responding to your partner, you're, you're fully present in the moment without the what if, what am I going to get, mm -hmm. what if I do it wrong. If you're just in total love, then that's, that's where you want to be. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Versus... Well, is he gonna like this? Is this gonna mean something? And all that crap that right. happens in your head. And I'm exactly. a, I'm a, a person that's worked with ED with men, and a lot of their issue is that, like, they can't slow down. And what you want to tell them is just be there now and just listen and pay attention to how she feels and or how he feels and what they sound like and what you know just be in that moment and get out of the the, the fear brain then it's then it's pure then it's love That's exactly it. so uh, look keep in mind you you're probably been asking yourself why are you spending so much time with sex and the reason is because Jesus said it is an important instruction that I have given to you about sex, that when people don't understand that, they're gonna miss the whole thing, okay? So that's why we're spending so, so much time. So I invite you, as the Circle of Atonement has invited us to do as well, go through the Cameo 11, yes. the instruction of sex, number one. Number two, Robert Perry's description is in our comments right now that you can watch later. And finally this, and then we'll go into the miracles. Are we okay? Say yes. Yes. Okay, good. So there's a story of a priest who went to get some therapy. Okay, and that priest went to that minister and said, or that uh, therapist and said, what I crave is sex. And then there's another one where a prostitute goes to that same person and says, what I crave is God. So you see the two different uh, approaches here. We have to become aware that you cannot uh, put a person into a, a, a mold. You have to know to understand what that person is experiencing in their own mind. So you can't judge them. You can't attack, attack them. You cannot evaluate them or improve them. But you are, ha at the end of the day, and I said this yesterday to you, I think, Rhonda, that what is the easiest way to see this person or this circumstance or this re relationship? Okay, this person is having a call to love. And it is my responsibility to give that love to that person do you understand the difference there? So yeah, people can crave sex, and they can also be a prostitute and crave love. Because they want, that they are experiencing wanting. <coughs> There's something more, something else. Okay, before we go now into the miracles, any other questions or comments? And that was my version, is that, do you ever want to understand that now? I think it kept it very open, and it, it explains a lot. Okay, good. All right, so let's go then to Miracle 20 and... and uh, 19, uh, 19, I think. And Rhonda, could you give me some water too? Yeah. Just thank you so much for your time and trouble here. <laughs> I have tea right now, but it doesn't... What's the word? Quench. Quench me, yes. 
So I like tea, though. Um, okay, here we go. We start with Miracle 19, right? I'll start that. And look, it'll go around. If you don't want to talk, that's fine. Just say pass. But most, most of the time we, we, and we do normally go through it a couple of paragraphs at a time. But in these Miracle Principles, we're, we're going through it individually because they're very important. So I'm going to start with Miracle 19. Miracles make minds one in Christ. They are a corporate necessity. Industry depends on cooperation, and cooperation depends on miracles. Corporate refers to the body of Christ, which is a way of referring to the church. But the church of God is merely the sum of of the minds he created. This is the corporate body of Christ. Okay. Um, okay. I, I want to say this easily to you. Susan and me are part of what we are part of in Palm Beach County. is called the Palm Beach County Cooperative mm -hmm. of Miracle Teachers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we call it the cooperative, and this is why. It is extremely important that we have a cooperative relationship <laughs> with the entities in Palm Beach County, okay? So all of the teachers of A Course in Miracles comes to here, like once every six weeks, and we can really discuss what's going on individually and collectively, and we can talk about it uh, authentically, and openly, okay? Because we're, we're all teachers of, 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 uh, of miracles here. And if we got a problem, and if we don't communicate it, it's going to be repressed and come up in a very ugly way. Mm -hmm. So we do this. But the same is true, that cooperative relationship we have with others is extremely important for us to know this. Okay? Because there's a tendency not to want to cooperate with anybody. <laughs> There's a tendency not to want to compromise or to engage because what we are cooperating with is ourself. And this is why A Course in Miracles calls it, this is the corporate body of Christ. So what I am communicating with is me, is my true body and not this. So, again, I don't want to restrict the distribution of God's goodness to closing myself from the world. Does everyone understand that? Yes, because then your ego takes over. Say that again a little louder. Because Tara. then the ego takes over if you restrict exactly. yourself. Exactly, exactly. Any questions about that? Right. Go ahead, Terry. If you cooperate, then you're sharing. Well, not only that, and... and and Jesus said to Helen Shuckman and Bill Thetford that the cooperative nature that I'm talking about is what we're experiencing right now. Helen, Bill, and me. And if we're not cooperative with each other, then A Course in Miracles is not going to be here for us. Mm -hmm. So that was really, uh, they were, Jesus was very insistent about this to Helen. You have to be cooperative with Bill Bill has to be cooperative with Helen, and both of you have to be cooperative with me. Uh, this is what happens in our relationships, for instance. You know, if I have a question about my brother or my sister, I will say instantly, I have to know here that there's not two voices here, but there's three. My, my perspective, Allison's perspective and Jesus' voice as well. And, if, and that's why Susan and I say, and I say this to, to the cooperative as well, hey, Jesus is here. Jesus is on our board, whether you like it or not. <laughs> and then from time to time, I'll have an empty chair. So it reminds me that, oh yeah, we have a, a presence here to help us, to guide us, and so forth. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's principle uh, 19. Any questions? Terry? Just that the presence of Jesus is here, 
presence of Jesus is the symbiosis of all the individuals together. Let's say it one more time. The presence of Jesus or God is the symbiosis of all the people together. Yes, because what I am what I am looking at right now is the Christ. Right. Okay? I'm not looking at Terry. Right. Okay? And I think that you came in just a little late, that's fine. But I think that you missed that what I said to them uh, at night was when I had a moment with a person and I wanted to get myself right up quickly and I said, and this is from the, the text here, was I, I thank you God for my holy son of God and in his glory I will see my own glory. You see this? And, and immediately my mind shift in that moment from attack to forgiveness and love instead. Because I am dealing, as you just said, the oneness and the Christ that I am. I am not embarrassed when I say to my brothers and sisters, I am the Christ, the son of the living God. And so are you, and so are you, and so are you. Okay, okay. Uh, Hillary Clinton, as well as Donald Trump, both of you, Same. both of you equally. I'm not, you see this? Same. Okay, I good. Know. All right. So hard. It's all right. Same. Okay, first of all, uh, Susan, how are we doing here on time? Um, we are... Time and space we checking. started a little late because we had to go on Facebook well, we twice. Well, we stepped out of the matrix that you invited us to. 822. 822. Okay, so look, we're going to have to go through 10 more principles here. It was really important for me to talk about sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we can do that. Do we have any questions from our Facebook Live people? I've been looking. Good, good, good. Um, because we do respond to you right now as yes. well as afterwards, too. Okay, so principle 20. One in writing. <laughs> Miracles rest. Oh. Oh, oh. Is it my turn or her? Yeah, yeah, Sorry. you and then we'll go around. Miracles rest on the law and order of eternity. Not on the Ark of Time. Okay. So it is beautiful. Because, folks, this is so... Look, one of my favorite lessons in The Course of Miracles is uh, I, am only, I am under only the laws of God. That means that everything I move in this realm, always I'm doing it from the posture of and the premise of the eternal timeless now. So I'm not evaluating you, for instance, you will, I'm not using the past to evaluate you. Now, there, there's gonna be moments where I'm doing that, and it's my responsibility to stop that and set myself right up. But you'll, what I understand about you, well, all of you, that comes to me when I remove my mind from the past and the future. As I said, Allison, to you, I don't want to measure matter. I'm going to miss the gift, the goodness that has been given to me the moment I slip into what is not now. This is why it's easy for me to say yes. Of course, he is the Christ, the son of the living God, and I will respect him because of this. I will, I will think about him for this reason. I will respond to him because of this. That what you are approaching here right now is an altar dedicated to God the Father and to God the Son. And that is how we should approach any relationship that we have. It's easy for me to say to me, hey, I'm not in a relationship with that person. And my response is, uh, yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah, you are. We are in relationship with all people at all times. And, and the moment that I say, oh, no, and I reject that person, I reject myself. That is how we tell this. Any questions about that? Okay, next. 21. A miracle reawakens the awakeness that the spirit and not the body is the altar of truth. This is the recognition that leads 
to healing power of the miracle. Wow, I didn't even know that I was reading that. But that's exactly what I have already just said. Yeah. Right. That, that the miracle awakens the awareness that the spirit, not the body, is the altar of truth. So when I say to you again, yeah, what I what I see is sacred we're here. About sex. Yeah, look. Oh, it's me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. I, I didn't know that you knew this, but it's there. Right. Uh, does everyone understand? That? I don't have to opine about that anymore because we just, just discussed discussed yeah. that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one. There's two. Allison, did oh, you can't. Two, oh, I'm sorry. Parts. I'm sorry. You're right. No? Yeah, no, you're right. There's okay. two and three paragraphs underneath. So let's right. do that. All right. Both your, of them. Your abilities will be very useful when they come under evolutionary control rather than involuntary um, lack of control. Following the right, following the right involuntary guide will enable you to recognize both physical and spiritual dangers and will provide you with the means of avoiding each of them the most efficient way. This is the case in which <laughs> the end does not justify the means. Okay, let me just stop you for just a moment because Robert Perry from the Circle of Atonement has a footnote for that. So let me just read it real quick. Underneath, uh, footnote 18, the idea here is that our abilities, which seem to to not be under control, should be placed under the control of the right involuntary guide, probably a reference to God or Jesus. Under this guidance, our abilities will then naturally alert us to dangers to our body and dangers to our spiritual progress and will also guide us to effect, uh, efficiently, I mean, that's not saying yeah, that, efficient. efficiently, avoid these ga uh, dangers. So go ahead. Does everyone understand that? Okay, the next one then. It is only when the means and the ends are not of the same order of reality that is there is fear. This fear arises out of the inescapable awareness of which you were given by God for all time, that only the appropriate means can work for the different kinds of ends that you must accomplish before you achieve your own, your one end. The awareness is built a built-in check, which was necessary if you were to use the temporary expedient time usefully. While there is time, <coughs> and bread are both necessary, Without either, you feel deprived, and you cannot escape by this confusing the two. All depression and all fear and embarrassment ultimately stem from this confusion. Okay, so, yeah, okay, so wow. a couple of things there. That went on. Again, about this here. It's talking about communion and bread. So when it's talking about communion, it's talking about your spiritual communion. It's not talking about <coughs> the, spirit, the uh, physical world at all. When it's talking about bread, it's talking about you physically eating okay. bread. Okay. So it's saying, in essence, don't confuse those two things together. One occurs on one level, the spiritual level, and one occurs in the, spirit, uh, the physical le level. So, for instance, if I need some spiritual nourishment, I'm not getting it from eating physical bread. And I'm not going to get physically fed by bread by going to the spirit level to get it. You see the difference there? Do you get this? Oh, you sure, Rhonda? You have uh, like a little question there. I just want to make sure. Huh? Just okay, good, good. So, let me say it another way. And this is a huge error uh, with a lot of students of A Course in Miracles. When I, this is why I'm not here to improve you or correct you or anything. Because what I'm looking at is a mirror, an, a reflection, an effect. So it makes no sense, first of all, to change what is already done and over with. You got that? Mm -hmm. Say yes if you got that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. 
<clears throat> number one. Now, if I perceive something that needs to be corrected, where do I go to correct that? I go to the level in which the error occurred. Where did the error occur? It occurred in the level of mind. It did not occur in an illusory ego, number two, and number three, it did not happen in the body or the behavior of people or ourselves. That is simply a reflection of what we are seeing. The world is nothing but an outward picture of an inward picture. When you change the inward picture mentally, you will see the evidence of that change externally. You see this? Uh, it goes back to your, if you spot it, you got it. If yeah. you spot it, you exactly. got it. Exactly. Okay, yeah, Terry. So that's as if when you notice something that you doubt or that you have issue with in someone else, your brother, your partner, your mate, mm -hmm. it could very likely be something that's... It is within you. Let me give you an example. And Helen, uh, Helen Chuckman went through this, uh, in the, and you can see it in the cameos. She was having a problem with the competition she had at Columbia University with other psychi psychiatrists. And in that process of looking at her own sh shit, shit, which it was. We could relate. I can say this. You got that, everybody? Yes, we got it. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, she had to look at her own stuff. And when she did this and was in communication with Jesus, and Jesus said, hey, this competition that arises within you is not against somebody else. It is a competition that you're having against yourself. You see this? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Rhonda, you and I mentioned this yesterday. Yeah. She called me and said, I, what do you mean I'm in competition against God? I said, because God has a will and your will is identical to it. But when you make another will, alien to that will, then you're going to feel like you're in competition against that will. Does that make sense? So, yes. so when I'm having issues with others, it's really a reflection on what my issues yes, are. Yes, it is. Look, it is. I said it last on. week, gingerly, by saying, oh, yeah, largely, you're, it's projection. It is a projection, as a rule. Completely. Yeah. Because, look, there is nothing outside of you at all. There's, a, there's nothing outside of you. Um, so anyway. Okay, what time do we have here? It's past 8.30. Uh, it is 8.33. Okay. Any final comments or questions or anything you want to say? Rhonda, come on. No. I no. thought you had a question. Anybody else? Go. Okay. Folks. No, it's not forming to ask. Okay. No. Look, I, for some reason, and somebody here on Facebook Live, I love you, Facebook Live, by the way. We all do. I don't all... <laughs> I don't always understand you. Um, so like today, uh, we're starting Facebook Live, which we have done this every week for months. And we know how to do this quickly. And then all of a sudden, everything is just different. <laughs> I don't even know whether I'm on right you now. Are, you I are. I am, okay. So we had to adjust to it, and that's what we do. Um, we even have someone watching from Sri Lanka. Oh, okay. Somewhere? Sri Lanka. Must be morning there now. Okay. Please. Good morning, by the way. It would be morning there. So why did I bring this Facebook Live? Okay, so uh, you're going to be able to watch this on the website. And if you missed any of the last videos, it's all on our website. You all know this, right? Mm -hmm. And you can watch last uh, Thursday's thing. And, oh, I'm mentioning Facebook Live is because normally they have a, a donate button that we just could add, but it's not there, and I don't know why. So I want to invite you instead to take two clicks to the next one right here, the Academy of Spiritual Awakening, which is right here. Your support and your assistance is helping us, and it means the world to us. And 
Our purpose and our function is to extend the love and the light of God to a world that is in desperate need of it. Mm -hmm. And we are here to give that to you. So for you here, folks, I invite you to go to the website and make a donation to the Academy of Spiritual Awakening. And if no, and by the way, let's thank uh, our host as well, co-host, because I'm here too as a kind of a host, right? Uh, let's thank Reverend Susan Stone for her hospitality, her grace, her classy sexiness and all that. Is that inappropriate? See? Okay. Like we're, I have to say that we're talking about sex. So if no one has told you that they love you, allow us to be the first. We love you on Facebook Live when we are in touch.